Hey guys, my name is Amos Heller. I'm a touring bass player with Taylor Swift. I also do some sessions and side work here in Nashville. And today we're going to sit down with some JHS pedals and try to push bass in a couple of different directions and see where it takes us. Just to give you guys an, uh, an idea of the tones that we're starting with, this is a Fender Flea signature bass modeled after his uh, 1962 Jazz and the amp we're using it is an Ampeg uh, B15. One of the effects you're really gonna wanna get your brain around is how to use compression effectively. I like to say it can be a scalpel and it can be a paintbrush. It can be something that you use to very sort of systematically and almost scientifically make your signal more even, or it can be a really fun effect to really play into and it can really alter your sound if you want it to. Um, as a bass player, especially if you're switching between playing with your fingers, with a pick, slapping, thumping, anything like that. Uh, it can get pretty wild pretty quickly, so a good compressor is definitely something a, any bass player would want to have in their arsenal. Uh, what I'm playing through today is a JHS Pulp and Peel, and one of the features that this has that I really like in any compressor that I use is the ability to blend your uncompressed signal back into it. So you can get the effect of really feeling your signal kind of like choked and smashed, but still let some of the life back into it. So here's a, here's a dry here's a dry pass with a pick, something with a lot of peaks. Another thing I like about a nice compressor is uh, it adds a lot of what people use refer to as kind of like uh, fatness or girth to your sound, if you will. And that's something I really dig about any compressor that I use is whether it whether it sort of makes the sound bloom a little bit and gives you that sort of, it's kind of hard to define sometimes, just a little more presence and a little more fullness in the track. That's something I like a compressor to do. Strangely, when you listen to a lot of vintage recordings, uh, stuff like Motown and Stax, whether by design or by happy accident, a lot of those bass tones have a little bit of breakup on them, a little bit of sort of dynamic reaction to what, what the player is doing. A lot of those guys have really heavy hands. An overdrive, uh, like the Morning Glory, is a great thing to use that way. It can be a sort of a subtle way to give your regular dry tone just a little bit more life, like this. Again, it's one of those pedals that with the flick of a switch, you have something a lot more raucous and something that teases you to play a little bit stronger. Uh, another effect you see on a lot of bass players' pedal boards uh, is a fuzz. Um, a fuzz is a great way to make your sound a little more expansive and aggressive in a mix to really make a statement going into you know the chorus of a song or a breakdown or something like that. Again, without without jumping out in volume. A lot of a lot of the stuff that I like to do trick-wise is a way to add intensity without necessarily adding gain. Because again, that's going to drive your monitor engineer, your front of house engineer, your recording engineer. It's going to just drive them crazy. Um, playing through a JHS Muffaletta at this moment, and one of the things I like about this is something I like about almost any pedal that I use. If I'm going to take the trouble to wire a pedal into my board, to Velcro it down, and to latch it in because I like my pedal boards to look nice and neat, I like a pedal that's versatile. I like the idea that if I hear a slightly different sound in my head that I can get it out of one pedal. This pedal has six different sort of fuzz profiles you can go through.
more and more of a challenge for electric bass players recently is having to cover synth bass like tones and if you don't feel like buying a keyboard and learning how to program all that stuff i found a couple of things that are very helpful that you can do on your pedal board that'll get you a little closer to something like that and so i want to talk a little bit about how to stack some effects to give you kind of a a swimmier more interesting synth tone so what i've got here i'm using the muffaletta with the emperor so it's a fuzz with a chorus, and a chorus is another one of those great tricks that make your move, your they make your tone swim a little bit, and they give it a little bit of motion. Again, a great way to kind of give your tone sort of presence and bring it forward in the mix without making it louder. Here's the muffletta by itself. We're gonna add the emperor to it now. synth-like tone. Here's the Emperor by itself. I have a JHS Prestige as part of my in-town board and as part of my session board, and it's for me it's an always-on pedal. Uh, you know, when you're putting together your, your just bass-flavored bass sound, you want something that's nice and big with a lot of presence and a lot of bloom, but not something that's going to put an engineer into a corner. Hopefully, when they go to mix your record later, you don't want them to have to sort of peel stuff out and take too much away. So I have a, a Prestige that's the first thing in line after my tuner. I set it at about 9 o'clock and I leave it on all the time. So here's the dry signal. And here's with the Prestige on. Again, it's, it's subtle, but for something I leave on all the time, I don't want anything that's too impactful. For me, it's just a, a, a small step that makes it just slightly better than it was before, and everything I have sounds better with it on, so I put it on and leave it on. Other than stuff that I find strictly functional for making your sound sit in a mix, or fattening it up, or compressing it, or easing the dynamics, uh, right after that, my favorite effects are one that make me play differently. I love throwing something that's kind of a curveball that forces you to think about things slightly differently. And for bass, for sure, delay is one of those things. Bass players don't use it a lot. They probably shouldn't use it too much, but I love using one every once in a while just to inspire myself to doing something a little bit different. So I'm using the VCR volume chorus reverb with everything on through a, through a pink band. 